Okay, hello and welcome to Hippo HQ. This is, as you can see, not a game, this is some art. So I've recently created the artwork for my channel. I've been working on it off and on for a little bit and um, decided to actually show you how I created what's called the impossible triangle. So this is Hexels. This um, is quite a decent program on, I believe you can get it on Steam. It was part of a Humble Bundle not too long ago. Uh, pretty good for creating isometric and pixel art. It has a couple of other things. You have quite a decent array of canvases to play with. So the shape I'm using is Trixel. You can have different types. I mean, you can go square. Um, yeah, I'm on Trixel. I'm just trying to think of what else there is, but no, that's all good. Okay, so let's go for a no. Let's go for one of those. We will delete this layer. Looks somewhat similar to Photoshop with your different layers. Uh, I also want to have a transparent background. I want to put it onto this Trixels view, which you can't quite see the grid. Let's get the grid opacity right in there. Grid color, let's make you black so we can actually see you. There we go. Okay, so it's looking a little confusing there. We might have to take it back a bit. But now, the this was actually pretty easy to do, the impossible triangle. Um, first, we want to create a layer, call this lines. Now, we go into line mode. We actually want to prefer using a palette. We want to create a sort of a grayish pencil, which will be used as the bulk of our lines. Okay. might actually put a background transparency of white just so we can see a few things so this is our art here okay what we want to do is create the bottom line the very first of the lines we go through and boom fairly simple now um, this one here we actually as you can see we've got a couple of different up we've got a sort of that angle we have let's see if I can get it there we have that angle we have that angle which didn't quite work so I was on the wrong one that angle so you can see we have a decent amount of different angles we can use uh, go from what we want to do is take one of these upright ones that way not that one but that one and we want to go straight up this will be for the other outside line Whoop, that's on the wrong side that is also on the wrong side what side did I put it on there it is you can see in this software you can go either side of the line which actually will come in handy later on but for now it's a bit annoying it doesn't matter too much though okay I think we've got most of what we want here uh, let's just go right up the top shall we voila doesn't matter if we're over a bit and all that sort of stuff now we want to do pretty much the same here So you can see I have gone onto the wrong side, that doesn't matter. Boom, boom, and boom. Okay, so that is our basic outline. Now what we want to do is say we want to get the thickness of the actual boxes. So we will create another line across there. Now from here, it is actually just a matter of joining up lines. We know we are using one particular downward arrow, uh, downward angle, so you'll get to that. 
and join it onto there. Do the same here. We get that, join it to there. So we have the first part of the basic shape. And from here, we can make sure everything matches by getting that across to there. So as you can see, we are just joining all the lines up pretty much as, um, with all the points. So we've created the bottom line, we've created the thickness, and we've just across there and used that angle there to go up. Same with that. Everything pretty much suits. We do the same up here. Where did you come across to? There you are. Now we merely need to do the same, but from this angle to get the inner lines done. Oh, we go to there. We find this angle and go across to there. That, that. And how much is it? That's one in a bit. So one and a bit would be this line here, I believe. Okay, so we have the basic of our framework all done. That is actually one of the harder parts, is getting that all leveled off and nice and smooth and everything. So we create another layer. Now what we do is a bit of just drawing, filling, that sort of stuff. We want to get three base colours, so we have, um, let's go for, what I like doing is three opposing colours. And as we're working digitally, we might as well go R, G, and B. Five and zero. Okay, so we have whoop. so we have red, green, and blue. So for red, red will be this line here. So what we want red to do is come in and across that angle there. Uh, first thing with hexels is take off the glow. It'll drive you nuts otherwise. The green will be this one, so you'll be coming along here. And the blue will be this one coming along here. Okay. We are pretty good. Now we simply... We can't use these lines here to fill in. Unfortunately, hexels won't allow us to do that, as you can see, it'll do there. So, what we will do is get our line ability, or line tool, and we just draw the blue lines. Go across here. There is possibly an easier way, I'm not actually too worried. Um, okay, one thing I think I have missed. We go back to these lines here, go back to the grey tool, and let's just cross the final one there. Same with this. Final one across there. And you already had it, didn't you? Yes, you did, because I didn't do this line across here. So that's all good. Okay, back to the blue. Back to making some more lines. Just make sure you fill in all the little gaps. You will get used to the software. I'd highly recommend buying it if you want to do any creative type work like this. Um, Photoshop will do the same job. It's Sometimes it can be easier to work in something you're used to, like Photoshop, which is still probably the best piece of software on the market. Uh, but this software does the pixel art just a little bit nicer. It's got some nice little tools that make pixel art work and this sort of style work just so much nicer. Okay, we can now fill in. Whoop. I'm using a, a mouse here, not a stylus, so 
here. Actual work on drawing is not going to work very well. But there we go, we have our first corner piece there. Now we will do the same with the yellow. There is no yellow, we will do the same with the red. How's that? Okay, so get the corners done, get the line done. Get that line done. Yep, and now this line to here. We basically want to be doing all of these harsh lines here. We can always go in and fill in the few that we miss out, but it's much easier just using the line tool and going zoom straight up instead of having to draw each individual one in. I mean, you can if you want to. Um, I just find it a bit easier that way. So, fill in the red. And as you can guess, the next one will be the green. So we fill in the green there. Go across to the green there, it makes a nice little jagged effect. There we go. A little bit more touch-up work. Uh, that's the edge one there. Okay, that is pretty much right on the money. Fill in the little gaps that won't be filled with the big block filler. Bang, bang, bang. Whoop. Now you see these ones, if I do that, we go green everywhere, so I'm going to have to get the lines in. And one more little one. And there we have the basis of your um, impossible triangle. Now I have cut it probably a bit too short there. What you can actually do is possibly would be nicer. We can just fill right up. So I didn't actually need to do those extra lines. I was wrong on that part. Not to worry. There we go. Yeah, that definitely looks a bit better. And the blue. Whoops, one little bit too much. There we go. And last but not least, the green. Okay, so we have our triangle. We can now hide the lines and voila. Now what we want to do is put the lines back in. So we will put the grid right down. We can actually even put transparency off. We need to create yet another layer, try and use as many different layers as possible. Um, that was the colour. And that will be the outline. Okay, now for the outline, we'll be using this tool and we want to do complete black. Now we go in. Um, with the software, you want to do the outline, but you also want to do the angles in. As you can see, it sort of has where you put the line inside, outside, it changes the corner. So we actually want to do, um, actually no, we want to do the outline straight off. And if I was to start, say, here, and do the outline to that, you will see there is that corner piece there not working. So we want to take that corner piece there, give us a grid, and just change like that. And now you can see it's smooth, it automatically rounds it out. 
We want to do the same with the interior lines. So we go back to the interior line. Try and, if possible, start with the longer one. It just helps when trying to get the exact positioning. So we want to go to that there, then the long one into that corner there, and then down. Okay, um, same with this interior. We want to jump up to there and there, to there to get the corner, and then down. Now I'll do that for pretty much everything, and it doesn't really matter which way you go from here. Um, you can go left or right, that way or that way, just pick a side and go for it. I'm going to go down this way, so we'll get to the blue outlined. And from here it's just a case of dragging and dropping. Same if you would be using any line tool in any other piece of software. Okay, now you can see here, if I do a harsh angle there, you can see it's quite a decent angle. And if I match this angle up, it's still going to poke out. So we don't want to be doing the harsh angle. We simply want to get you to finish there. This one, we do want the harsh angle, but that's an interior angle. So back to here and voila, we have... The angle's correct, but something... Nope, okay, so we go back to there. Now we have the angle's correct. Okay, so that's just stuff to be aware of when using this software. Um, yeah, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good for doing outlines. And back to speeding it up. Okay, that is the last of the lines. We will now take off the grid. As you can see, we have a decent amount of lines all around. It is... Okay, so we go from not too bad. I mean, it's still the impossible triangle. It still works, but the outlines just finish it off. It looks complete. It looks properly etched. You can, if you want, start adding color in to it so you can add shadowing around there, shadowing there, shadowing up there, a bit of shadowing in that corner, a bit of shadowing in this corner. That is fairly easy. Now that you have the colours done, what you want to do is select that and you actually want to go say a nice dark colour, then drag from there to there and that'll give you all the shadows. If you were to do it that way, it'll give you even more variations. And then from here we want to possibly add a bit of colour there and yoink. Wait, what does that say? Cannot modify hidden layer. To make sure we're on the right layer. Okay, so this is not, this is just adding a totally different effect in. Um, let's go, ah, that's the one we want. Tolerance. We want foreground to background. So, foreground, we'll make blue. Background, you can make dark blue. And you can see we can actually add in all the shadowing we want. Now, I mean, it's not 100% perfect, but 
it's a pretty easy way of doing the shadowing. Um, however, I'm not going to have that. I am going to keep it all one colour and if I want shadowing I will add shadowing in later. Okay, now next stage is to create yet another layer and this layer is going to be the cube layer. So with this we essentially want to create a cube outline. For that I will actually make it uh, let's go with a contrast in color of yellow. This is just for the outline so we can see where we're going. But we want to draw the outline of a cube, which will be... That will be one part of the outline. We want to go there to there for the other. This cube will go up this way. And we're just following the outlines we already have created. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. There it goes. Now with that, um, we want to follow that harsh line. So we go to this outline here and say there which will go from there to there and there to there. Now you can see I've actually gone on the inside line so this doesn't have to be perfect once again. Right, so we have our square here. Oops, we just need to do that. Now this is really basic and tacky as you can tell. Nothing super flash with that. Um, what we want to do now is get the colouring right, so look, drag blue back to there. So green at the top, red on the side, blue there, very easy to remember. So we go green at the top. Red on the side. and blue at the front. Now we go black, we hide all the icons, uh, everything else, and we simply want to draw an outline, the same as what we've done previously, just around that, and then we'll do one for the interior. Sometimes it just doesn't want to snap, but there we go, it's done. And now, interior. Come on, you can do it, there we go. Oop, sorry, I just pushed a shortcut on my mouse. Okay, so... Now, if you get into this mode where I haven't clicked, I'm not dragging, and it does that, just hit enter, and it will snap it back to the last one you've done. Easy peasy. So, we bring open these. That square is the exact square needed for the corners. All we need to do now is select it, highlight that, and drag it into the middle. So, Control D, same as Photoshop, to stop the selection. Um, we are pretty much done now. So we'll save this. Now I've already got an Escher triangle saved there, so I will do this as impossible triangle 2. And now we want to export. And impossible triangle 2 as a PNG. That is perfectly fine there. We can, however, do a Photoshop 
that will save a bunch of layers. Um, it can be pretty easy for the next stage, so why not? We want, maybe we want to go a little bit bigger. Now I haven't quite worked this, oh yeah, there they are. You see it's fairly big files and sometimes it can be a bit annoying to do that. I'm not actually too worried about its sizing at all, so we'll just make you possibly 30. Um, deferred anti-aliasing and OK. Now we want two separate layers for outlines, separate layers for grids. Why don't we just say exporting for that and away we go. Haven't actually tried doing the layers so it'll be interesting to see what it actually does do. Okay, it does take its time but that's all good, I'm happy with it. Saving image. So, we now want to run Photoshop. We'll open one that we have used before, and this is Impossible Triangle version 2. And here we go. So it's actually saved the outlines for us in a separate file, which is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> we have created a bit of duplicity here, but that's fine. We don't need you. We don't need these sketch lines anymore. And let's just toss the background. So here we go. We now have quite a nice Photoshop layer system set up. So first thing to do is crop, so we don't need all this excess white space, especially if we're going into After Effects. Okay, save that. Now I actually want to go along and delete these two. And First, actually, we might merge them. Okay. Let's see, merge layers. Merge layers. So we now have our cube and our outline. We want to delete the cube temporarily and save. Then we want to undo. We then want to save as, now this is impossible triangle 2 and we want to have this as this cube. This will make animating later a lot easier. Okay, so we delete, oh, we go back to deleting that one and save. We'll just open the cube. I mean, there's ways around it. It's probably the long way I've done. Doesn't really matter too much. Um, and let's crop the sucker out of here. Okay, so you can see even 100%, that's still pretty good and pretty high detail there. So, we save you. Make sure we've got you, save you. Oh yes, okay, we're good to go. Save you. Okay, we can crash out of Photoshop. Crash out of you. Uh, first we will load After Effects. Okay, now in After Effects we want to do a new compilation or composite whatever you want to call it, new project, grab a new one of you, let's do, now I live in New Zealand so I'll be using PAL, so let's do, oh, I'm thinking film 2k, no nah, we'll just do, actually not you, we'll go you, there we go, 30 seconds is a bit much but that's all good, okay, 
So we want to import the two files, which are those two there. Now you can see the size of it, so scaling is not going to be an issue. And that should ping exactly up there. Look at that, perfect. So, I mean, you don't have to be super pedantic about that. Right, now what we need is we need to duplicate this a bunch of times and drag it down. So, sorry, my computer's having a bit of a tough time here. Okay, so we duplicate you and drag you down to, we want a bit of a space, so about there-ish. And now grab you to duplicate, make sure you drag up to the top, like that, and bring these down, and you don't have to be super accurate, and H should be enough, yep, so, what we need to be accurate on, however, is the very last one. Um, we actually also want to lock off the triangle so we can't move the triangle. So now, this one, we want to match it right up. So that is the bottom. And then the top, a bit too much, there we go. The top should be pretty much perfect there. Now we select them, we go to our, which one is it, a line, there it is, and we vertically distribute. Now you can see they're all a little wacky, but they are perfectly distributed. Now don't use the up and down arrow, but do use the left and right arrow to simply put them where you want them. And you'll be able to tell by looking across there when they match. So there's a nice line there. There's no extra bulge coming out there. We're pretty good. These ones will go across this way. Yep, you're good. You're good. And you're good. Okay, so this will be what's called the left side. What we want to do is select all of those. We don't want the very last one because that's technically the bottom. And we pre-compose. If you don't know the code for that, it is Control Shift C and call this left. I hit the R, left. Okay, now that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we want to duplicate, and duplicate, and duplicate. Now that we know how much we're actually dealing with, we get the last one, shimmy it along so it fits perfectly along here. There we go. And the same thing, select all of you. This time we distribute horizontally. Now you shouldn't have much of an issue, but you might find every now and then they just go a little out, but that's fine. Nope, everything seems to be pretty good. And then the very same, this is the bottom, so don't do the last one, but pre-compose the bottom, so lower. Now duplicate and duplicate and move. Duplicate. Now why I'm moving them there, it just puts them all in the proper order. So that will be the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, blah, blah, blah. We want this one to go all the way up. Uh, 
up a little there, that's good. And then sort horizontally. Now you will run into this issue here. They're all done like that. That's because we took it easy way. Not to worry about that though, we'll move them along. Now this last one, delete. We don't actually want him. Okay. This is just very roughly put in place. Okay, now we can get it aligned perfectly. Why did that not get selected? Oh, wait, sorry, I think it did get selected. You have to be careful with what you are selecting. So it may even pay to just lock those two just to be safe. That way when you select this you are selecting the actual cube you want and not any of the others. Now that one's not quite right I think. That's better. Oh, I got that one pretty right on. Okay, snap you to there, you were pretty close, so a little bit, there we go. A little bit to there, right. And once again, pre-compose you guys and make you right. Now, we animate. So I find a second, maybe two seconds is pretty good. That'll give us a decent amount of motion. So let's hide this layer. Okay, we only want to be working with one at a time, so we can actually, actually we'll unhide that, hide that. So, uh, we do want to add a keyframe for all of them. And we want to get a keyframe here for all of them. Actually, you know what? Let's unhide them. I don't think it's going to matter too much. Okay, so right position will be essentially there. Lower position will be around there. And left position will be there. Now we just do a bit of fine tuning. position is just a fraction out overall. Last possibly. There we go. And that position for the lower can go to the air. Okay. Now we hide you. What we should start seeing is in the space of two seconds they all move. Now that's correct, that's correct, that's not correct. So there is a little trick to getting that correct which is duplicating the left, putting the left on top. No, actually we don't want to duplicate the left here. What we want to do is rename you uh, sorry, the lower to lower L for lower left. We actually want to duplicate and rename U to lower right. So we put the lower right there. We copy all there. Now you'll see that is 
sorry, I done the lift positioning. I want the lower positioning. Let's try that. Now you see that's right, however that is not. So we open up the lower left and we actually delete those three cubes there. Then we open up the lower right and we delete those four cubes there. Jumping back to the final comp and something's still not quite right. Did I delete the wrong ones? I possibly... No, you're right there. Right, let's put the left above. There we go. So lower is both lower and upper. You can call them lower, upper, left, right. It doesn't really matter too much. But over two seconds, we have the animation done. So select the lot of them and once again pre-compose. This time we want to move all assets there and we want to call this animation. Now here is the trick. As you know, we are sitting at the two second mark. What we want is to go one frame before. So I'm on PAL, so I will be going at 24. And we end this animation at that point. Then duplicate. And snap that there. So when we go across, this way we are not going to get it pausing, we are just going to get the smooth animation. And you can, once you've got it for one frame off, we can simply duplicate, layer up, snap. There is a easy way of kind of doing this. We can simply, if we undo those and we take these ones back, Get that, maybe some more. We're dealing with um, 30 frames at two seconds each, so we'll need at least 15 of them. So that is sitting at 16 of them, that's fine. Now you can actually go animation, um, keyframe and sequence layer. We don't want any overlap do that and we'll just delete the very last one. Oops. Voila. Now we have 30 seconds worth of a cube animating. There we have it. We have one animated impossible triangle. You can see they go there. They are actually in front of there as if it's dropping back. Those ones there seem to turn to the left and then drop down. That is one impossible triangle. So play with that, enjoy and yeah, keep animating.